Hello everyone. Welcome to RRDI Prep. My name is Samir Sardana and in this video we will be discussing the second set, second question of three set Venn diagram maxima and minima concept. So this was the question number 1. I uh, we will discuss the shortcut method of solving this question without making any equations. So here is the question number 2. Now the basic information remains the same, right? So the basic structure is telling us that there are three different games, right? We have three different games, right? Uh, and the members plays at least one game. That means nobody lies outside of outside of the region of these three set. And three games are snooker, right? Here we have thirty. Here we have fifty players, right? Snooker. Fifty members are playing snooker, and bridge. Thirty six members playing bridge, and forty eight playing squash. And the condition given are right that we have already discussed in the first video that this value, let's say if this is a, it has to be greater than equal to one. This has to be greater than equal to one. This has to be greater than equal to one, right? This has to be greater than equal to one. This has to be greater than equal to one. This has to be greater than equal to one, and this also need to be greater than equal to one. So these are the condition given here, right? If you read it, you will get to know why I'm writing it down as greater than equal to one. Question is asking you. Now, what can be the maximum number of members who like exactly two sports, right? <clears throat> so, I want to maximize the number of students who lie in this region, in this region, and in this region, right? I want to maximize the number of members who like exactly two sports. That means these members, these members, and these members. That means I want to maximize the region of this, of this region, this region, and this region, okay? Now, understand it. The total number of members are 80, right? We will follow the same approach. First, we will assume how many prizes we are distributing. And what is the concept of prize? A member playing one game will be awarded with one prize. A member playing two games will be awarded with two prize. The member playing three game will be awarded with a three prize and so on. So I'm distributing 50 prizes here. I'm distributing 36 prizes here. And I'm distributing 48 prizes here. So in total, I'm distributing 134 prizes, right? So 50 prizes to those members who are playing snooker, 36 prizes to those members who are playing bridge and 48 prizes to those members who are playing scratch. So total I have 134. So 134 prizes are supposed to be distributed. Now let's first satisfy the condition. What is the condition? Every member, every member need to give at least one prize because it says everybody is playing at least one spot. So I give them a number, roll number one, roll number two, right? So I have given a number to all these person from roll number one to roll number 80 because total number of members are 80. Everyone need to give one prize at least, right? Everyone need to give one prize at least. So first condition is satisfied now, right? And I also need to satisfy that I need one member here, one member here and one member here, right? Let's say roll number one, roll number two, roll number three are those three members who are awarded with one prize. That means they are playing one game. So now this condition is also satisfied. Okay. I also need to manage this condition that I need one value here, one value here, one value here. That means, that means I need, I need one person with the two prizes here, one person with two prizes here, one person with two prizes here. So let's say roll number four, roll number five, and roll number six. These are the three members who have been awarded with two prizes, right? Who have been awarded with two prizes. So these are the members who are coming over this region. So this condition is also satisfied. I also need to satisfy the, the condition, sorry. I also need to satisfy the condition that one member will be coming over here. That means this member will be awarded with three prizes. So let's say, uh, let's say roll number seven, right? Roll number seven is that member who is awarded with uh, three prizes, right? So let's say uh, there's roll number seven here, right? And that person is awarded with three prizes. Now see that how many prizes have been utilized, right? How many? So total I had distributed first 80 prizes, giving one prizes to everybody, right? And then these are the three members. I'm giving three more prizes, right? Plus this is a one member which I'm giving two prizes, right? So out of, 
Out of 134, 85 prizes has been utilized and all conditions have been satisfied. So out of 134, 85 prizes has been utilized. What, I'm, what are the number of prizes I'm left with? I will be left with 49 prizes. Now, where should I distribute these 49 prizes? If I want to maximize these value, if I want to maximize these value, I will keep these 49 value in these regions, right? Now, that means all the members from roll number 8 to roll number 80, right? They already have won one prize, right? Now, if I distribute these 49 prizes among themselves, everyone has already won prize. And if I give them one more prize, they will be categorized under these regions. They will be put under these regions because now they're getting two prizes. That means they're playing two sports, right? So therefore, these 49 prizes, when distributed one to each, will be distributed equally among a member of 49, right? 49 prizes ko jab aap ek ek karke distribute karoge to 49 prizes mein 49 members mein distribute hoga so the maximum possible value of the number of members who like exactly two sports you see that we have three members already here and i'm bringing 49 more members here right so total 49 plus 3 49 members here and 40 and three members here so 49 plus 3 the maximum number of members who like exactly two sports the answer to the question will be 52. And this is the final answer of the question, right? This is the final answer of the question, right? That's it. So you see that this method of solving the question is more simpler than any other method. You don't need to make the equation, right? And you can straight away answer this question, right? There is one more question. Let me show you that question, but we will be discussing the solution in the next part of the video. Here is the next question, question number three. I want you to try this question, right, with this condition here, that exactly 12 members like all three sports, right? Here is the condition that, it's not that one member is liking all three sports, it says 12 members like all three sports. What can be the maximum value of the sum of the number of students who like both snooker and scratch, not bridge, and the number of members who like both bridge and scratch, not snooker? So try this question with this method. I hope you have understood the concept now because we have discussed two questions exactly on the similar concept. I'll be discussing this question in the next part of the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. And this is my referral code LIDSME to get 10% of one on Academy Plus purchase. If you are willing to attend all of my quant session and your logical reasoning and data interpretation session, you can use this referral to get 10% off. Thank you so much and see you in the next part of the video.